Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me once again. I know I have been MIA a little bit with the videos, but I promise I am coming back. So I can't wait to get into this book review. I just finished A Curse So Dark and Lonely and it was actually a really great read. I don't know why I put it off as long as I did to read it. Um, it's probably just one of those things where, oh, I have it on a shelf, I'll get to it sometime. But I think the real problem is I was just keep buying and buying more books. But I just threw it out of my mind until I realized that I had the access to the advanced copy of A Vow So Bold and Deadly. So that is the third installment of the series and I actually got A Heart So Fierce and Broken which is the second one is right behind me on the shelf. So I haven't read that one yet but I'm looking forward to it. So let's get into the book review for A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Um, I actually really enjoyed the book. I thought it would have a little bit more motifs to Beauty and the Beast because that is what this is basically a retelling of and Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite all-time favorite stories. The Disney version and the original version are both classics in my book. Um, I think that the main thing about about A Curse So Dark and Lonely that caught my eye was that the main character Harper has cerebral palsy and most of the time you don't see main characters having an outward flaw and if you do it's like a scar or a limp or something else that's going on with them but to have like a physical disability that doesn't hinder the main character but actually helps her to improve on her character development throughout the story is really well done in my book. So hats off to the author for doing that. She did an amazing job building on Harper's character. I love the fact that she came from such a not shattered but a struggled background. Her father ran off because he was knee deep or neck deep in debt as you would call it and her mother unfortunately is dying from cancer so it's only her and her older brother it's only her and her older brother who are able to help out around the house to make sure that they have everything that they need and unfortunately Harper is in a state of distress she doesn't know what to do her brother is in this dangerous situation with the people who have come after them because her father has run off and hasn't paid any of his debts so it's up to her brother to pay those off and now he is basically dealing with these people and she doesn't know what to do about it and she has to take care of her mother all at the same time so it's just just building pressure until one day she sees something very strange while being a lookout for her brother. She sees someone putting an unconscious girl into a van. So as she attempts to stop it, something magical happens and it freaks her out in one moment. It probably would for me too if this happened, but she ends up in the land of Emberfall and this is where Prince Ren and his captain of the guard, Grey, actually reside. And it's very interesting how this plays out. It has some original literary devices, uh, motifs in O2, the Beauty and the Beast story. So of course, as you know, in Beauty and the Beast, the prince is cursed by a witch or by a mage. And it's either one of two things. One, <laughs> because he saw her and he told her that she was too ugly to be in his presence. That's what the Disney version has taught us. And he was sending her away and due, his, due to his arrogance and pride, she cursed him to become a beast. And the second one, if you guys haven't checked out the French version of Beauty and the Beast, check it out. The link is below. The story is very interesting. In the second one, the witch actually falls in love with the prince. And because she is not able to capture his heart, she then curses him to become a beast in the hopes that he would give up and just give in to her. That is like the weird and exaggerated part, but it it actually works. And so in this story, that is what happens. We have scenario number two. The mage, as they like to call it in this book, um, she is in love with the prince. He turns her down. She feels jaded. And so she curses him and the entire kingdom for him to turn into a beast. Now, the really interesting thing, and this is spoilers, so if you haven't read the book, don't listen to the rest of this part. He changes 
each season. So it's not like he's a beast the entire time. He's in his human form. And when he changes, he changes into different beasts every season. So I believe the season that they picked for this book is the winter season. And once fall and spring, or no, spring is not a season that they're in. They only repeat fall and winter. So once fall is done in the winter, he turns back into the beast. And it's a combination of different animals together that creates him. And unfortunately, it plagues his villages, his kingdom. Everyone is terrified and they believe that the royals have abandoned them. So it's up to Grey, his captain of the guard, and Prince Wren to actually break the curse that is on them. Um, Wren's character, something to note. I didn't like him at all like through the rest of this entire story I, I I wasn't into Rin's character I don't know what it was he was a prince check he was arrogant check he was down the dumps about his situation sure he really wanted to help his people yeah yeah he was guilty about all the things that he'd done for sure great but that chemistry between Ren and Harper was like teetering or non-existent. I would have preferred if her and Grey actually had more chemistry in the book. And you see them slowly becoming friends. He's teaching her how to throw knives. He's teaching her how to play cards. He's telling her, oh, you want to approach Ren in this type of situation. He's not just arrogant and doing anything just because there's a reason for this but at the same time Harper is steadfast she is headstrong she doesn't take no for an answer and then at the same time she doesn't really think fully about the situation that they are in she is placed into this other world into their politics into their magical system and all she can think about is oh you have a castle that restocks food daily and you haven't fed your people why and so she takes it upon herself to try and go and feed the people and the prince is just written is just like no you can't do that there's going to be riots there's not enough food for everyone it's restocked daily but what, what what are you doing and she doesn't really think about that whole dynamic i I understand what she's trying to do but at the same time it was just annoying to me throughout the book how she would take it upon herself to do something because she thought the prince didn't want to do it himself so I don't know that was kind of an interesting dynamic for her character development um she becomes really strong and brave towards the end and you can see how feisty and brave and true she is to everyone but at the same time she was a bit annoying she was I'm not gonna lie um the most interesting character out of this book that I absolutely loved was Grey's character Grey to me was more interesting than anything I think even though he was the captain of the guard he had heart he had compassion and even though he didn't really voice his true opinion to the prince out of fear of being put out of his position even though the castle is cursed even though the prince turns into a monster even though the prince turns into a monster and killing people even though he has to clean up after the prince do the prince's bidding he still keeps his inner thoughts to himself and that entire time i'm thinking gray is going to explode he's going to say f all this i'm done with y'all so I am really interested in Gray's character for book two. My heart so fierce and broken, so I can't wait to get into that. If you guys have read this book, let me know. What did you think about everyone's character? Rin's character, yeah. Harper's character, yeah, I can, I can get with Harper. Gray's character, love Gray's character so much, so much. Um, even though he is a man of few words and even though he is in a few scenes and it is about Ren and Harper, Grey to me is more interesting. And then you'll find out why he's more interesting as you go along into the book. Um, the character of Lilith, the witch slash mage who cursed Prince Ren, is just, mm, she's sadistic and she's a little bit crazy. And not just a little bit, she's like a whole lot of crazy. She likes to torture them day and night whenever she can just to see how Ren is going to respond, if Grey is going to attack her. They can't kill her. For some unknown reason, you can't kill a magical being with just anything. I, 
I don't know why. It just makes it harder for the book to get rid of her, I guess. And it's got that air to feel like, oh, you know, she's going to be around for a while. So what are you going to do about this? So there's like a lot of things going on in this book that you'll definitely see in the second one. So now that we're done talking about It Curse So Dark and Lonely, hmm, the series of events was interesting. I think that the part that I really was confused about towards the end was the battle scene of how Ren turned into a beast and time was up and Harper was trying to break the curse. I think that part really confused me a bit because you have it jumping from one thing to the next. So I don't know, maybe I have to go back and reread it. Was anybody else confused with that part? And if so, let me know what you thought about that scene <laughs> or a few chapters in the book. Um, I give this book four stars because it is really interesting, compelling. I did enjoy the retelling of the story for Beauty and the Beast. Why is it not a five? Some things, just some things, not a few, not a whole lot. It's just tiny things that uh, I would probably take note of. But if you want to, you can go ahead and check out my written review. The link to the blog is down below. And now what you guys have been waiting for is the little sneak peek uh, talking about A Vow So Bold and Deadly, which is the third book. And I was able to get access through it through NetGalley. And in the third book, a lot has changed. Gray is no longer with Brennan Harper. Lilith is still around for some apparent reason. <laughs> she survived. How? I guess I'll find out in book two. And they are currently going to war. So I don't know if war was like borderline happening in the second book but is like full-blown happening in the third book war is straight on happening they're about to demolish Emperfall and I don't know if the people are still into Prince Ren and the royals he's the only survivor so how are he, how is he going to rally his people to fight because he doesn't really have anyone else backing him up he doesn't have any allies spoiler he's not the beast anymore and it's just going to be craziness going on so I'm interested in seeing how a vow so bold and deadly turns out for all the characters um Harper and Gray included Harper and Ren aren't talking to each other and even though Ren wants to Harper is just like no you, you don't have my trust anymore so I'm trying to figure out exactly what happened between them like I said, I'll have to read book two. If you read book two, what did you think about it? Um, it's okay to give some spoilers because I don't mind. I'm going to read it anyway. All right, guys, that's about it for this review and this sneak peek of A Vow So Bold and Deadly. Um, hopefully it's better than what book one is and hopefully book two actually really pulls me into the story and to the world. Okay, and I'll check you guys out later. Bye.